loves, welcome back to the Hottie Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria, and today we're gonna to be talking about the new moon that's happening in the sign of Taurus. Now, if you have been hearing a lot about the energy of Taurus right now, I promise you, you're not going crazy, you're not tripping your balls off. Everybody is talking about Taurus energy because there is a hyper focus, a hyper concentration of Taurus energy at this moment in time. Why this is important and relevant to you, even if you don't have planets or placements in the sign of Taurus, is because it's gonna be impacting you on the greater scale. And I promise you that if you allowed me to look at your chart, I would be able to show you how this energy is going to be impacting your personal, your more intimate life. Because believe it or not, Taurus does rule an energy in your natal chart. Believe me on that, I'll put money on it. So let's go ahead and dive right in, starting from the very beginning. So the very first thing, first and foremost, that I think that we should talk about is the fact that this Taurus new moon is happening May 19th, roughly around 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's gonna be around lunchtime. The exact time is 11.54 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For those of you guys that like to work your magic, manifest at your altars at the exact time of the new moon. Now me personally, I usually wait until the sun dips down. That has always been my vibe. I love to work at my altar, manifesting, lighting candles, etc., etc when the when it gets dark out. It's always been my energy, it's always been my vibe, but to each their own. You don't even have to manifest if you don't want to. Why this Taurus new moon is so significant is because we are in the middle of eclipse season. The eclipses already up until this point have been very, very powerful catalysts for change in our lives. Not only are we seeing this in our intimate lives, but we're also seeing this on a global level in government, politics, business, the economy, how we're taking care of the earth, how we're taking care of ourselves and also our values. What is it that's important to us? The things that it is that we used to think are very important, now it's kind of questionable, now it's debatable. This is because of these very same transits that, is that we're talking about today or tonight this hyper focus on Taurus energy, but also the uh, the the over the other major planets that are contributing their overarching energy into the the vibes as a whole. So, with any type of new moon, we can expect this opening of energy. It's this vacant hole that we get to fill it in with whatever it is that our hearts desire. So this is why if you're someone who sets intention, this is an amazing time to get quiet, to focus, to reflect, to go within and ask yourself, what is it exactly that I see for myself for the future? There have been significant changes that have happened in my life thus far. Now that I've lived through that, now that I've grown through that, now that I've evolved, where do I see myself in the future? So this new moon has the opportunity, the potential, to bring in very beautiful, abundant beginnings. Now, regardless of where this Taurus energy is falling within your chart or where this new moon is happening within any one of the houses within your astrology chart, and I really encourage you to pull your astrology chart if you can, it will inevitably kind of um, influence your values and you may see a really strong shift when it comes to money, finances, and your resources. This is because this is the energy that Taurus actually rules. Taurus connects to our ability to be grounded and our ability to move even closer in alignment with what is of great value to us and then draw it in closer to us so we feel the sense of comfort and stability and security in every single area of our lives. If that is not present, we can have very root chakra, very base level feelings of questioning our worth and our, our purpose here on earth, but also are we safe? Are we are we being provided for or do are we are we feeling a sense of neglect? Are we feeling an absence of nourishment? So for this new moon in Taurus, this is a phenomenal time to tap into the energies of, do I feel like I'm being nourished? Do I feel like I'm being supported? Do I feel stabilized currently? Is this energy coming from a spiritual lens, a physical lens, an emotional lens, 
where's this energy showing up within my life in one area or multitude of areas. Focus on that at the time of the new moon, set intention around that, and you will be working to fill up that hole and fill it with something that is significant and that has value to you, especially now. Now, I know that for many of you guys, the idea of manifesting, setting intention, praying, or talking to the universe, or talking to the divines, can be very exhausting because it feels like this ongoing process that we are experiencing in our life. Now, you don't have to work with this new moon to manifest or set intention, but I do wanna say that we are constantly co-creating with the universe. We are constantly co-creating with our higher self and the divine. But if you are in a space where you would nourishment for you looks like rest, recuperation, that is another wonderful way to work with the energy of this new moon is by grounding and stabilizing yourself and also trusting that all of your needs, resources will be provided for. However, if you're someone who has been going through significant change and transformation, this is another opportunity for you to work on manifesting again those very specific special needs that it is that you have right now at this season within your life. So everyone is going to be different with how they are going to be working with this energy with this new moon. But for the most part, I want to encourage you to take your power, to take back your control and work with this new moon in the way that you feel most called to. I will say that this new moon is going to be trining with Pluto. Pluto is a planet of death, destruction, um, regeneration, rebirth, power, control, manipulation. And Pluto is currently retrograde, now in the sign of Aquarius, but backtracking into the sign of Capricorn. So there is an abundant need to be aware of how we understand our power here on Earth and also understanding where we might be abusing our power, giving away our power, and on a larger scale or on a more external scale, how people in positions of power have been using their power for good or using it for bad and abusing it, AKA taking advantage of people, politics, money, et cetera, et cetera. Keep your eyes on the news for information that we will be watching unfolding. We will usually not see groundbreaking information being revealed around times of the new moon. We usually see it in the halfway point and definitely leading into and at the time of a full moon. So if you want to be hyper aware or vigilant and be able to stretch your powers of predictions and prophecy, watching the new moon will show you a glimpse of what is to come, but it's very quiet. It's very under under the current, under the radar. So if you're watching the news, you may not, again, see these great groundbreaking revelations of information. However, what is being discussed, the murmuring will be what will eventually, will be what is eventually is going to be taking off and something that is groundbreaking to say the least. And specifically when it comes to government politics business, how people in positions of power have used again their power for bad, or they it might have to deal with taxes, resources, money, how they've spent the money that it is that they owe. Because Taurus is opposite is actually Scorpio and Scorpio energy is again power money and power how we use it and abuse it so when it comes to your finances when it comes to your resources when it comes to your everyday life do you feel like you're in a position to um, be powerful do you feel like you're being seen and heard are you being nourished and supported for some of you guys you're you might be scaling back or having revelations and initiating new practices, rituals, routines to help you when it comes to stabilizing this certain area in your life that Taurus rules. So for some of you guys, this might be your finances, it might be your spending, it might be your checkbook, your wallet. You might be scaling back or you might be prioritizing where your resources have been flowing to, you might be looking for jobs, you might be cementing a career for yourself. These are energies that I can see as I'm looking at the chart and it feels very exciting, it feels very promising. 
one thing I want to say is don't second guess yourself with this new venture, with new business, with new jobs, new career. A lot of the chart right now is wired to support you and again, nourish you. I know I sound like a broken record saying the word nourish, but that is the overarching energy that is that we're seeing here. When we have Uranus and Jupiter transiting through the sign of Taurus, there's a lot of instability and quick changes and unpredictable changes that is that we're seeing again in these energies. So as this is happening, it's very important that you find different avenues for you to ground yourself. For some of you guys, it has a lot to do with grounding specifically, like going out into the nature, going for a walk in the park, or finding places of earth and terra, like earth energy, being a part of the space that you can go where you feel safe, you feel whole, you feel supported there. For some of you, this might also be launching um, like improvements in gardening, uh, gardening lifestyle, more natural, earthy, crunchy, granola type of energies. I would not be surprised if someone lost their job in like Wall Street or stock markets or something crazy like that. And then they end up being like, you know what? I'm selling it all. None of that means anything to me. I'm buying a van, I'm revamping it, and I'm traveling across the United States. That is the type of energy that, is, that we're seeing within this chart. If you can't relate to that in that extreme realm, I wonder how that metaphor and how that example kind of applies to your current circumstances right now. Whether it be your marriage, whether it be your income, whether it be your day to day, your planning, relationships, whatever. There's something about getting rid of and detoxifying yourself of something that had value to you at one point and now no longer because through your evolution, through your growth, through your transformation, you realize it was great then, but it's not It's not my safe space anymore. It's not my haven. It requires too much of me. It bled me out. And now I'm in a more grounded, simple, you know, uh, season in my life where I, I'm thrilled at a good, hearty meal. Clean, simple, Energy feels real good. I, that's the, the, the energy that I'm seeing here as I'm looking at the chart. I do also want to say that our greatest source of wealth is going to come from our ability to be creative and our ability to create. There's going to be a lot of announcements of pregnancies, businesses, how you take care of yourself, um, your rituals, your routines. You might be even investing in skincare or building something along like fifth house matters, something that feels very, that can, that showcases how you feel about yourself and expresses it to the world in a way that is re a reflection of how you feel, essentially. I was gonna say colorful, but some of you guys might actually be feeling a little bit more beige and white and neutrals, and there's nothing wrong with that. I went through a really significant season in my life where whites and neutrals were it for me. Now I'm feeling greens and blues and lavender a lot. And then there was a season of my life where black was it. Black, just black. I, if they could make a darker color than black, I would be here for it a hundred percent. But that, it just, you're, what, what we're drawn to and what we're attracted to is what is a reflection of what's going on within us. Now, don't get me wrong. When I was in the season of black, I wasn't emo. I mean, I kind of was. But I, there's always going to be that element of emo around me, always. <laughs> That's just my nature. But um, it's don't take it for surface level. Go deep with it. Go deep with it. How how are you feeling right now? What you could contribute? What you create? What are you being called to create? Ground yourself first and really begin to take this seriously. For some of you guys, you might actually be moving away from social media. I myself can relate to that a lot because it feels like, not that it influences my ability to create, but it impacts my desire to want to share what it is that I'm creating. Does that make sense? It's more about less is more and quality over quantity. That has always been my method of approach to life. It's always served me. And there are seasons in my life where I actually want to go within even more than it is that I already have and just not share. So I'm wondering how you guys might be relating to this because I, I feel like even as Pluto is retrograding outside of uh, Aquarius and going back into Capricorn, there's so much, this is not the first time that we've been dealing with Capric um, Pluto through Capricorn transit. 
this is not the first time that we have been dealing with Saturn and Neptune transiting through the sign of Pisces transit. Jupiter entering into the sign of Taurus is brand new, but it's amplifying this energy of, I really, what, what do I actually need here? What do I, what actually feels good for me right now? I'm going to expand that, that what makes me feel more grounded and stabilized and you guessed it, nourished. What is making me feel more nourished and supported? And if it's not whole, if it's not, if it doesn't have substance, if it doesn't reflect the value that I'm in my life right now, you know what? It just not, it might not be for me. So focus on your creativity here. Focus on your ability to be grounded. Focus on the future that and paint it in a light, in colors that makes you feel vibrant healthy, grounded, peace of mind is everything here. And one last thing I'll say is that there's this huge ele energy right now, an elephant in the room is what I'm gonna call it, of power being returned back to the people. We are not in a place anymore, well, we're battling with it right now, where society and what is trending doesn't define us anymore. We're, we are finding what works for us and we are implementing it for the sake of humanity because technology and all of those energies right now are starting to expand and grow and we have to be very careful, especially as Pluto is tran transiting to the sign of Aquarius. We have to be very careful how we, where we're giving our power to and make sure that we're not giving it too much over to technology because it can change humanity for, for the long haul. It can really change and that's not a warning. That's not anything to give anxiety or attention to. It's something to be aware of. So listen to your intuition, listen to your vibes here and try to, to, well, not even try because you're going to, you're going to be in this and you're going to be in alignment. If you're a part of my YouTube channel, if you're watching now, I can't, chances are you're in alignment. So I just see that humans, people are finding new ways to ground ourselves and actually disconnect from technology because we need it so much. And it's also reflecting in the astrology charts. This is going to create a lot of tension, agitation that we're going to be seeing bleeding out into our day to day life because especially if you're not someone who feels grounded or if you feel like your needs aren't being met or as you're shifting your values here, you refuse to reward energies that are bleeding or draining to you or abusive to you in some way or neglectful to you, you refuse to reward it with your loyalty. This is another planet, or I'm sorry, this transit is going to reflect who and what actually deserves your loyalty. Break. You guys are probably wondering, girl, where are you? I'm in my bed. You can't tell because of these sheets. These sheets come directly from Cozy Earth. I am not lying to you when I tell you this is the best investment that I haven't made. Why? Because they sent them to me. But if they didn't send them to me, I would pay for them. If you take all the sheets that I have ever bought in my entire life, and I do invest in sheets. I'm Cancer Rising. My bed is my sanctuary. Okay, so a, a good quality bed, mattress, pillows, and sheets are everything to me. If you take all of what it is that I've already invested, it wouldn't even come close to the quality of Cozy Earth uh, materials and products. They're, they've sent me lounge sets. They've sent me two sets of sheets, and this one by far is my favorite just because the color is exactly where it is that I'm at in my life right now. I'm definitely like a soft lavender, soft blue type of energy, and the blue is working. So they have a coupon code, which I've shared down below, but shout out to Cozy Earth, the sponsor of today's video. Especially now, because you evolved so much that you do not want to compromise how f your, your process here, your progress, how far you've come, what feels good for you, what is actually healthy for you. So this is the new moon that will initiate those very awesome beginnings when it comes to my loyalty does not belong to everyone because not everybody deserves it. So I'm wondering, not only how are you grounding and supporting yourself, but what are you ground? What are you grounding here? What are you supporting? What are you committed to? What are you loyal to? Because that is the path. That is the way. That's going to draw a lot of your power back to you. At the same time, it may trigger people as they realize that they are no longer on that pedestal anymore, where they no longer deserve a significant role within your life. No bad feelings. No hard feelings at all there. But it's the truth. You're taking your power back to you. 
and watch how you might actually feel very irritated by the energies around you at the time of the new moon. Again, May, May 19th. So the time, the exact time is 11.54 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but keep your eyes on the two to three days around that. It's gonna show you a lot. It, it'll reveal to you a lot on a soft, quiet level. Sometimes silence speaks the loudest, and this is the new moon that it's gonna say a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to pulling charts for Jupiter's transit in the sign of Taurus. I'm assessing the value that this will bring into my client's life, how to work with these energies, um, what, how to prepare for the struggle and the challenges that, can, that will be pre presented to them because with every single planet, with every single transit, it's not always a good thing or a doom thing. There's two sides to every coin and there's a lot of energy that we're working with in a whole lot of gray area. So I have a lot of clients, actually my calendar kind of had like a default hiccup there, probably because a result of Mercury retrograde. Um, so there's more clients that I was expecting, but I'm going to be focusing on that um, now. But thank you guys again for hanging out with me. It is always a blessing. It's always an honor. If you need me, you know where you can find me at BahadiLife.com, working my magic, pulling charts, shuffling cards, etc., especially for Bahati Love Notes. I'll link all of those things down below. But until then, you guys, thank you again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!